Sit back, relax, put your belt on, and enjoy the show. That's Which it. takes us on to the Rebels versus the Crusaders. Now, oh, well, look, I know we won't be proven wrong on this game. That's for sure. So we've got one in the bag, boys. <laughs> I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll put this down now and say that the Crusaders are going to win. Yes, I was going to say, should we start start with the tips and then talk about the game or what? I think so. I think so. Look, the Crusaders are going to win this one by 58 points. Yeah. Uh, I didn't think you were going to make me go higher than 50, but uh, look, I, I'm just not prepared to take the low, low liar on this one. So I'm going to say 60 points. There we go. Done. Well, rather than just read through the team like we have in the last one, why don't we go yeah. backwards and read through the reasons that we think they're going to get done by half a century? All right, I'll, I'll give you a bunch of reasons. Mate. It's, uh, I'll, give, I'll, give, I'll give you reason number one. It's called David Havili running it, Glenn Vihu in the centres, uh, and Lester Fying and Nuku running it, Frank Lamani with a 50% tackle success rate on the wing. The halfback, <laughs> I, I love Frank Lamani. Huh? <laughs> Double his size and weight. Oh, that's it, mate. I love Frank Lamani, but. He's already missing tackle. He's already not interested in tackling, and he's not going to be very interested in ch- trying to tackle less defying Anuku this week, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely ridiculous. Look, if, looking through that back line as well, Kellaway has been pushed into outside centre, so it just shows that they're, they're completely out of men there now with Matty Tamua ruled out with a neck injury as well. you got George Worth up fullback, who, to be honest, I continue to be impressed by. I think he's been playing pretty well, and far surpassing what I was expecting. <laughs> so uh, props to him. Stacey Illy not there this week. That This week he's returned to Melbourne uh, for the lockdown for personal reasons. And we did discuss before the pod that we believe the personal reasons was he was told to go home. <laughs> <laughs> no? Yeah, no, um, I like it. Yeah, good. And uh, on the flip side, you got Havili, as you said, Enor, who has just been waiting for a breakout game. It's hard to say. Anything other than this one is probably going to be it. <laughs> yeah. is not the quickest winger and he doesn't play a lot of 13. I know he does every now and then, but then if he's out of position a little bit, prepare for Enor just to burn around the outside immediately. <laughs> the the Rebels' entire backline defence relies on can Coriobiti cover the whole field and all uh, of the Crusaders' backline, basically. That's, yeah, that's, that's why I didn't say 100 points. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's insane, isn't it? Um, Back three from the Crusaders is Fanger and Uku, Reese and Jordan. Say no uh, more. <laughs> and drop Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Next I say more. There's four or five tries. Yeah. Uh, in the halves, you got Joe Powell and Carter Gordon playing against Mitch Drummond and Richie Moonga. So uh, obviously Richie Mo rested last week. The Crusaders would have been told they need a win by probably 50 points if they're going to have any chance of closing the gap to the Blues for and against a host of final. So, I mean, I think they'll be on a mission and I think Richie Mo is going to have an absolute field day against this fractured back line. He's the Ferrari they put in the garage for one final tune-up before race day. You know what I mean? Last week they were like, no, 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 come on, boys. We'll uh, pull out the uh, the soft the soft Pirellis uh, against the the Rebels. The, basically, the Rebels are the soft Pirelli tyres, mate. They're going to fall apart from about minute one of the race like last week. Sorry, Formula One references getting dropped in here. But, um, no, nah, mate. I was going to say, mate, they've put the Formula One car out to go against the kids in their go-karts. Like, it's just not <laughs> Yeah, that's, a, that's very good. Um, if we push yeah, how, how, how many tries will Richie Moonga score? That's the real question. Yeah. You know, like, two, yeah, two, two for you. Okay. He's only good right. for two a game. <laughs> yeah. Backs that way. All right. The four, should we talk about the fours at all? I mean, really just, it's just the class. I don't think we need to go to individual players, but well, it's the class. We have Barrett and Whitelock back together as well. So they haven't yeah. played a lot of games together, but they've got depth in their second row. They've got Leota and Hosea for the Rebels, but uh, Hosea, as good as he's been, I'm still not convinced Leota's a second row, but he will be, bring a little bit of physicality, if nothing else. Yeah. Masarani had his best game last week, so maybe he can try and get a little bit of ad line, but... You know, I think it, it seemed more like a last ditch stint to uh, to make the Wallabies squad than anything consistent. I think he's been pretty disappointing for the year. Mm. Uh, what else you got? Ethan Black had a back for the Crusaders, isn't he? He's just going to tear up. Uh, he is going to absolutely. I mean, he the way he's been playing this season. Then he had a week off. Uh, it was a week or two weeks off. I'm not sure because of some injury. Um, yeah, I mean, he's you know, I don't think he's going to force his way into the All Blacks, but like he's 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 playing like. He's certainly got the interest of, sele- of the selectors, doesn't he? So um, yeah. he definitely will want to finish on a high. Uh, also, I mean, he will want to get them into the finals to finish on a high next week. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you said it all with really, it's it's Barrett and White Locks. The All Black Locks, uh, the, the, the Rebel Scrum has been pretty good at times, we must say, uh, has been pretty good. But 
it's just the Crusaders, mate. It's what they do. So, yeah, we've already tipped it on this one. Um, good luck to the Melbourne Rebels. Can I just touch on the uh, the bench as well for the Rebels with so many young players coming in? You've got young Tonomai Pia, who... Uh, I'm out of here. That's the one, mate. So he's come across from the NRL, isn't he? The NRL convert. Mm-hmm. So excited to see him play. This should be his first game. They said he had uh, appendicitis at the start of the season. So it took him a long time to get healthy from that and kind of pick up the, the game plan to get a run. So he should be a bit of excitement off the bench. And then you've also got Vidogo as well, who played in the Fijian under-20 side back in 2018 and also was part of the Brisbane Broncos development squad in the NRL as well. So there's some firepower there in the uh, reserve backs and it'll be interesting to see how they go just sadly for them they're up against Dallas McLeod the giant human in the centers coming off the bench and Mateele who we've raved about enough on this podcast I'm sure yeah no I'm excited to see Vidogo he uh he Vidu, Vigo goes um so it should be good um just wanted to reiterate that joke again but um <laughs> no, I mean, we're a little spoiled for choice here, actually. The, the, bloody, the Crusaders game is on. We can watch the Crusaders at Leichhardt Oval, being here in Sydney, uh, and the we can then see the Chiefs play later on at uh, up at Brookvale Oval near me. So um, Not bad. if we could be bothered, and if it isn't very cold, I know this is where Australians complaining this cold, but um, uh, we could watch two Kiwi sides play today. Yeah, I'll be in New Zealand, fine. but thanks for rubbing that in. Yeah, no worries, man. So any anything <laughs> there that uh, that makes you go against your tip, mate? To me, the uh, the Crusaders dominate the line out. They dominate the back row battle. They dominate the back line. Maybe the only thing is I would say the Rebels have been solid enough in scrum time this year with all Ulysse and Ilof. And uh, the Crusaders are running out. Brody McAllister, who's a little bit younger and less experienced. George Bauer has been good, but probably not the anchor that Joe Moody has in past seasons. And obviously Mikey Alato was pretty class. So maybe there's an opportunity there. Maybe they're just trying to scrum the game out. Yeah, no, look, I mean, I don't think there's really anything to say. This game is the big, for, biggest foregone conclusion. It's really just, as we said, uh, how many points will the Crusaders win by? And for me, it's really, I guess, how long can the Rebels hold on for, really? That's yeah. that's basically, we know the floodgates going to open towards the end. It's how quickly do they open. So, Yep. Looking, for, looking forward to w- watching some, um, some tries be scored in this one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah.